The next style of animation that we're going to be creating inside of Flash is called Shape Tweening. Now Shape Tweening takes its name from in between, in between two states. And what I mean by that is we're going to be creating the first drawing, first shape in an animation. And we're also going to be drawing the second final shape of the animation. And what happens in that scenario is Flash will morph or change one shape into another. And this is really kind of an interesting uh, approach to animation and it's something that I really want to stress that while might look cool initially um, is something that you should really use sparingly. It's very taxing on the computer processing when you're actually you know compiling this animation so you should really think about you know using it sparingly I like to think of it almost like the cheesecake of animation why cheesecake well you shouldn't have cheesecake every single day of your life but if you have it once in a month or something like that wow one of the greatest pleasures of life so use shape animation sparingly all right, well, let's get started by creating our shape animation. And as you can see here, you could choose to use a stroke or not. In fact, I'm going to choose no stroke. And you can see that by just pressing down on the stroke color, as you saw there. And when you get your drop-down menu of colors, you'll see that in the top right-hand corner, there is a icon that looks just like this, meaning no stroke. So I'm creating, as you can see here, a red square. Now let me point out one thing in particular. You'll notice that when I'm doing this, my rectangle drawing does not have this tool selected, object drawing. And the reason being is because I don't want to have this as a grouped item. I want this to be an individual shape. So when I select this with my with my black arrow tool, my selection tool, you'll see a bunch of these little white dots all around your tool. And when you click on the stage, they go away, of course. So we don't see that blue bounding box. Shape tween will not work if you are doing this with either a grouped object or a symbol. Now, you might not know what a symbol is because you haven't gotten to that video yet, but when you see symbols, you'll understand a little bit more about it in that video about how symbols are sort of like these containers, these groups of different objects. Nevertheless, they're much more powerful than a simple groove, but the main point I'm trying to get across here is that shape tweens will only work with shapes. How do I know that this is a shape? Well, number one, if I select it, you can see it's got those white dots all over the place. And if we open up our properties window, you can see it's described as a shape, not as an object drawing, not as a symbol. All right, so we've got the beginning of our animation, and what we want to be doing is taking this shape and bringing it to another shape or converting it into another shape, morphing it into another shape. So first and foremost, let's do this. Let's deselect that object. Let's choose another color. You can choose whatever color you want, but if I choose red and um, let's say blue for this moment, not really all that imaginative, but uh, nevertheless, um, what I'm going to do is to say, well, look, I still have my default set to 30 frames per second. So I'm going to say, well, I want one second of animation. So if you remember, 30 frames, go all the way to frame 30, that would equal one frame, of, or excuse me, one second of animation. So at this point, I'm not going to press the shortcut F6 to create a new keyframe. I'm not going to be making a copy of the previous frame. I actually want to make one shape at the first frame and a completely different shape at frame 30. So rather than you know insert a keyframe and then having to delete that shape, there's another way that you can go about that, and that's to right-click here and say insert a blank keyframe. So you'll notice that you know my square starts off at 1 and goes to 29 and then bang at frame 30 disappears. That's because the keyframe at frame 30 is empty. There's nothing inside of it. There's no contents in that frame. So at this point we're going to change our rectangle tool into our oval. And you'll notice I'm still not making it. It's just a shape. It's not an object drawing or anything like that. And if I hold shift I will make a perfect blue circle. So you can kind of see where those elements are. It's not really a square, it's a rectangle going to a circle. 
And as I'm scrubbing the timeline, we can see that these things are not exactly in the same position. So I'm going to introduce to you something that's really kind of interesting when you're working with the timeline. And that is this key icon right here. Well, I'll show you all of them. One of them says edit multiple frames. One says onion skin and outline. And the first one just says onion skin. So let's see what that does. Well, you'll notice that if you scrub your timeline, you can see that there are two different dots next to your reading head, the red marker. So what I can do is I can extend and, and see what's behind my red marker or what's in front of it. Now in this case I just need to see what's behind it. So if I'm on frame 30 and you don't even need to see all of those frames, although that's useful and remember this is a great tool to use if you want to do some walk cycles or anything with keyframe animation. So as you can see here I'm gonna select my selection tool and I'm gonna move this roughly into the center of the two objects. You can even use your arrow keys to sort of nudge that thing back and forth. So now that I deselect the onion skinning we can see that that circle now is much more in the center of the rectangle. Alright great so we're halfway done. We've got a shape at the beginning that's one color shape at the end that's another color so what we're going to be doing in this case now is the final movement where we right click anywhere in between those two points uh, you could click at the beginning or anywhere in between and what we're going to say here is create a shape tween so right click create a shape tween when you do that what you should see is an arrow going from one of the dots to the next and a green bar. Well, if we scrub that, you can almost hear the transformer sound effect happening as this works its way along. And you'll notice that it's changing from a rectangle into your circle. Amazing. Look at that. Um, one other thing I want to bring to your attention. I used red and blue, not by, um, you know, haphazardly. Um, but I did so on purpose so that you could see that by the time I get to 15, I've got a mix of red and blue, and it gives me a purple sort of color in the middle. And that's because Shape Tween not only tweens shapes, but it also tweens colors. Another great way to use a Shape Tween. So that's the beginning of your Shape Tween, and as you saw, a little bit of onion skin uh, at work there as well. But there's something else um, that we're going to be looking at. As you can see, the shape tween is sort of like turning into my rectangle, which is okay, but not exactly what I wanted. Um, so we'll do something to help along with that called shape hints in the next video.